Frank, you, how many how many pro days did you go to this year? Uh that's a good question. Um, uh, I don't know, nine or ten, maybe. Is that what worked out to be? Is that more than more than nor you normally would? Yeah, that's more than I have in the past for sure. Yep. Yes, it is. What, what was your biggest takeaway from the pro day at Clemson? Uh, I did not make Clemson's pro day in person, and then uh, he. His uh, he missed his first one with uh, some of his medical conditions, but uh, he had a second one that I didn't attend. He just did some uh, measurable stuff. Coach, as you start to assess offensive linemen, what what are a couple of things you you like to look for right out of the gate? Feet, number one, use of hands. Uh, does this guy show love of football? Looking to finish, play with some nasty. Uh, change of direction. Can he bend? Will he sink his hips? Those are some of the top ones. Thank you, Frank. When, whenever there's discussions about what was going to happen with the, with the fifth overall pick, you know the, the coach said yesterday that you know the game has kind of changed. It's evolved, and you're not holding the ball as much as you used to. What's it like to, as you as an offensive line coach to see it evolve to the point where you know you are maybe looking for guys in the second round to play tackle and guard and be starters instead of maybe up there in the top of the first. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's the ultimate team game. I mean, I'm not sure quite how to answer that, except that, uh, the receiver we took at five is going to have just as much of an impact in the run game than anything else. Cause he's going to dictate coverage. So that, that's a great thing. Um, and then from a pass game perspective, protecting with the O line, I mean, the ball's going to come out. So there's a lot of guys that you can still take in the second, third, and fourth round and develop in the starters or guys that uh, might have even a faster development window in the second round to become starters. So I, I'm not uh, at all concerned about not being able to pick a guy at five, if that's, I guess, what you're trying to ask me. Well, really um, just – just. Standpoint. Yeah, really just asking for you to what, – what's it like been for you to kind of see the development of the game kind of and, and kind of shift and kind of philosophies change as to, as to you know, what pass walking might look like in the NFL or, or kind of, you know, time, time of release and things of that nature as, as the game's kind of evolved over the last few years? Uh, yeah, I'm not, not quite sure how to, an, to answer that. I mean, it's – I mean, everyone's going to have multiple st- – uh, as far as QB drops and, and, and timing – at least the, the smart teams do, right? You want to tend to get the ball out quick on time and in phase. But uh, my approach to coach the offensive line is, is not really uh, lean on that timing as much. I mean, we got we to gotta block for as long as it takes to win is a phrase I say in my room. And uh, I don't really concern myself with uh, those type of issues from as far as developing the offensive line. But, yeah, I mean, the game's evolved, a lot more passing, a lot more timing. I know uh, what I watched from last year's season, a lot of empty sets. And then uh, our quarterback like, likes those and he knows where to go with the ball. And uh, that's always a plus from an offensive standpoint, let alone it's, I would say it's O-line friendly for sure, you know, with them getting a good release and having more options to get the ball out quickly. Coach, it looked like uh, Jackson was put in some situations. Clemson looked like they manned a lot of stuff instead of passing stuff off and in protection zone and might have put them in precarious situations. When you're when you're evaluating, you don't really look at what they do technique wise or schematically or protection wise. You're just looking at the athlete and projecting him to what works with you. Is, is that the is that the deal? Yeah, for for the most part. I mean, I'm I'm going to look a little bit at their scheme, whether that's a maybe a plus or a minus, to help me come to a decision on his developmental curve, if you will. Uh, what's what's really foreign to him or what he's got really good exposure to in college and experience wise and, and some of the techniques and the schematics that we teach here at this level. Uh, but for the most part, it's really evaluating the the athlete and the offensive line from a fundamental standpoint, his ability to transfer that college tape to the NFL game. Two Coach, more. I know you like to get your uh, I know you like to get your hands on these guys. Yeah. And, you know, felt them around a little bit. But you never did that with this guy, right? Did you ever see him? Did you did you ever see him in person? 
Uh, no, did not see him on person to have multiple Zoom calls with him. Uh, typically, where I've been, it's been combine from the stands watching a guy, and then you make your decision on the tape, and then you visit with them maybe 15, 20 minutes at the combine, and that's about it. So I, I mean, I've, I've had more interaction with this guy than I have all my other years normally uh, in the league. So uh, I'm not concerned with actually not going to see him in person, per se. I had plenty of Zoom meetings and evaluated enough tape. Last question. Frank, I, I know he has probably a long way to go and you just drafted him, but could you see him uh, realistically competing for a starting job this year? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He's going to come in and compete for a starting job this year. No question. Okay, Coach, we'll let you get out of here. Thanks for your time. 